I was so happy with an unlimited supply of food. If I could choose how the world is going to end, I would pick a zombie apocalypse, purely because it means I get to stay inside with my Xbox and baked beans, and just wait for all this to blow over. In reality, it's looking like the coronavirus is a much more credible threat to our population. I initially wanted that to just be a joke, but these numbers aren't slowing down it seems. But don't worry, it will take your older loved ones before it takes you. You handsome young spring chicken you watching this at home. Come take your mind off the doom and gloom by watching Dawn of the Dead with me. Now I wouldn't say I 100% love this movie. I guess the first time I knew I was gay, I was 13. This guy. Todd. He was building a deck in our backyard. Uh, uh, okay. Just please stop. I remember he had the most astonishing blue eyes. Oh my god. I'm in hell. <laughs> but I do love how this movie starts, which is perfect for this video because that's where the story begins. Incredible. You know that one actor you recognise when you see her, but you can't think of what else you've seen them in? That just happened to me when I saw Anna in Dawn of the Dead. But as it turns out, the movie I remember her from is Dawn of the Dead. We see Anna at work, we see her leave the hospital, go home and relax with her boyfriend. Have some steamy, stanky sex in the shower while the world falls to heck outside. And then wake up to a kid tearing chunks out of your man's neck. Hashtag just girly things. But in all seriousness, I like how this opening feels. It's all warm and dark. The blacks are all crushed and the light outside is all overexposed and shit. It feels kind of like a lucid dream to watch. Call me weird, but I remember how I felt watching this movie much more than I remember the actual plot. Speaking of which, we should go see how Anna is doing with the whole dead boyfriend situation. Uh oh, he's a zombie now. Very unfortunate. It seems the world has gone bananas, and Anna <laughs> needs an escape plan. Ah, fuck's sake. What am I doing with my life? Where's Anna going? Let's follow her with this awesome camera work. We get a nice tour of her hometown. There's a trusty old service station boobies and the neighborhood sheriff he seems nice the tour guide is cut short abruptly when she totals her car <laughs> women drivers am i right fellow men anna wakes up to a beefy black guy holding a gun to her head which is the perfect way to wake up if you ask me and then they walk into some other lost sheep who immediately start firing guns at them a perfectly rational response to strangers in a tunnel. Hello. They all team up together and try to break into a nearby shopping mall. You know, standard zombie movie stuff. But what's that in the distance? Fellow survivors or super spooky missing limb things? Hurry up! Damn, I'm a brave boy, but there's something about the zombies in this movie that gets to me. Yep, I'm going to have a wet mattress tonight. So for now, it appears we have a team of survivors. I can't yet remember who survives out of this lot, so I won't bother introducing them just yet. Unless they do something funny or interesting. I don't know, is being pregnant funny or interesting? It, it might be. What the fuck are you doing? Uh oh, retard alert! You pick the loudest fucking object you can possibly use to break a window. You even look at the fucking crowbar in your hand before making this dumb choice. Oh gee, should I use a large porcelain toilet with hollow properties that reverberate sound when smashed? Or a solid bar that I can just hold in my hand after breaking the window with it? Oh gee boss, I don't know what to do. They do a slow, cautious check around the mall to make sure it's vacant. Yep, looking pretty good to me, and jump there! Woo! 
that one actually got me pretty good. So the white guys wandered off to a sports shop and found this hungry boy having a snack. And this other hungry boy is really feeling the jacuzzi bubbles. I think I'm going to carry on referring to the zombies as hungry boys. Let's just see how it feels. The gang goes up a level and bump into the mall security, who don't take too kindly to strangers. For some reason, they don't immediately trust an officer of the law, a hot chick, a nurse, and whoever this is. They treat them like criminals for breaking into the mall, keeping them locked up overnight, talking to them like shit, and putting them to work. While they're on the roof taking in the nice views, they see a dude on a roof across the road. But we'll come back to him later. It's time to watch some TV. Maybe the TV man will tell us why this is all happening. You kill unborn children. You have men on man relations. Same sex marriage. Yep, it's the gays. I knew it. I just fucking knew it. Gay pride? <laughs> more like, oh shit, they're zombies now, better hide. Two dads? More like, two deads. Leak the anus? One of the things they do is called anal leaking, where they, a, a man's anus is leaked like this by the other person. Like ice cream. Like ice cream. <laughs> more like, calm your irrational mind and come back to watching the movie with me. And we're just in time too, because there's a truck heading right for us. After some bickering back and forth, they decide they should try and help the people on this truck get safely into the mall, bringing with them this beautiful specimen. God damn. Alright, get that temptation out of here before I cheat on my wife. <laughs> After a while, things slow down a bit. We've lost one more person, but things ain't all that bad. Everyone's having a good time, being sexy and surviving. And our roof friend is still around, playing games with Angry Cop. Somehow two of the asshole security guards got locked in this room, but I must have been making coffee when this happened, so I can't tell you why or when this happened exactly. Speaking of being completely left in the dark, the power goes out in the shopping mall, so now it's all creepy looking. Just in time for the pregnant girl to give birth. <coughs> now it's getting started. I'm not sure why the pregnant girl gets tied up. I don't think this guy explained why he did it, or maybe I was still making coffee when that happened. But it's a good thing she did get tied up because somehow she's now a hungry boy. Yeah, this whole hungry boy name doesn't really work in this case, but I'm going to stick with it. Ah oh yeah, now here's where we discover a new level of creepy scary. It's a zombie baby. You know what? I changed my mind. I don't want to end the world with a zombie apocalypse anymore. Wrap it back up. This whole baby zombie thing's really brought down the mood of the group. The second it's born, everyone feels like killing each other. So now the hot chick is dead, whoever that was is dead, and Betty Crocker, who I didn't bother to introduce, is dead. Yep, it's probably best if we shoot Baby Hungry Boy 2 before it causes any more harm. By this point, everyone's kind of bummed out and they're a bit bored of being inside the mall, so they form a plan to head to a nearby marina. To get to the marina, they're going to need to pimp up this truck with defensive stuff and also Hungry Boy killing holes. Before they leave the shopping mall, they try to help out Roof Friend by sending some food over using the dog. I guess he works for Woofer Eats. Or, de or deliver a woo. <laughs> uh. Unfortunately for Roof Friend, the Hungry Boys follow the dog as it makes its way into the gun shop, and he becomes their evening meal. With this plan failing miserably, they go over there as an act of kindness to put him out his misery. Oh yeah, and also to get their hands on some sweet new guns. I think he might be done using them. 
There's a bunch of shooty scenes between the shop and getting back on the bus, but it's a bit too dark so I'm going to skip most of this. Gotta have clean visuals for my YouTube thing, otherwise you might click off. There is a cool scene with a big hungry boy holding an explosive barrel, and that gets blown up, so that's kind of neat. They almost get to the marina, but then one of the buses flips over, so we lose a couple more people. I don't know who they were, but I'm sure they weren't of much interest, so they will be getting no in memoriam from me. The rest of the gang, however, finally reach their destination. And here's where the arseholiest of the arsehole security guards blows up some gas tank, so he gets to conclude his story in a heroic, explosive, visually pleasing final chase scene. Now he does get an in memoriam from me for being a good boy towards the end. And here we are, finally. It looks like everyone else gets a happy ending, and they can all sail away together. Downtown when they jumped on us. Oh no, Michael. Oh, damn. His name was Michael. I feel bad for not knowing this already. I feel like I should have gotten to know him more. What's his favourite colour? What football team does he support? And more importantly, what's his political stance on the re-election of Donald Trump? <laughs> 